Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB-TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Tammy Pearson, director of the nonprofit Project Leadership. Tammy has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Tammy, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. So Project Leadership is really about leadership, but it is it starts with education. Education, how do you complete, how do you gain the credentials for success as a uh, productive member of society? How do you earn a living? Well said. Talk about project leadership. Project leadership, we uh, come into work every day on a mission to help students prepare for what's going to happen after high school. And as we do that, if, if you would picture a tool belt. And when we get into our office, we put on that tool belt. And the tools within that tool belt include uh, a really once underutilized state of Indiana program called 21st Century Scholars. And it's a, it's a program that was uh, established more than 25 years ago by then Governor Evan Bayh. And it helps uh, provide access to students who come from families with low incomes who otherwise may not have had the opportunity for the very important education that you just referenced. And so we uh, help enroll students when they are in middle school. That's, we define that as seventh and eighth grade. The state of Indiana defines it as seventh and eighth grade. And we uh, help them uh, attain a scholarship status that will provide tuition for them one day to, a, to an Indiana post-secondary institution. And so when you think about what the cost of a, a public education is, uh, at least in, in the state in which we work, uh, that's, that's easily across four years, a $32,000 scholarship for the students. And so we've been able to take enrollment uh, from single digits into uh, around 80, some, some years even 90%. And, and that's, that's been a, a great tool within that tool belt. But what we've realized is that signing on a piece of paper and enrolling in a program means very little unless you have someone coaching you, encouraging you, activating that, that experience uh, and commitment that you've signed up for. And so project leadership, another tool that we keep in that tool belt is mentoring. And at the high school level, we surround the 21st Century Scholar students with community volunteers who come into the school and meet uh, for up to an hour, uh, one day a week, to support students in their, in their journey. And um, that is such a meaningful and humbling experience uh, for, for many of our students. So one of the things that, that we don't really appreciate is the skill set that students accumulate as they are going through school and as they go, are going through life. A low-income student is accumulating a lot of skills. However, there are also maybe skills that are lacking, yes. that are really important for not survival in the normal sense, but survival within the academic environment. So what you're, what you're doing is you're recognizing that there may be a need that a parent might not be able to provide, and you are helping the parent to actually ensure that that student is able to have success within the academic environment, which might be a little bit foreign to certain students who, who grow up with certain experiences. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. There is sometimes a, a misconception that people have about um, those of us or the, those families and parents who who come from lower economic means that um, they're apathetic, that they may not care, and it, uh, we have found that that is so wrong, such such a, a actually a horrible uh, misconception. It's just that that they don't have that knowledge and and the ex the prior experience to be able to bring. Uh, to their student to navigate them through waters they've they've never been in. There are also issues that that we're just beginning as a society to recognize in how people deal with the stress of poverty mm. um, and the stress of of trying to figure out how to move yourself into 
a different way of being. Um, one of the ways to cope with stress is to feign indifference. Yes. Is to look apathetic. Sometimes um, anger spills over. Uh, sometimes there's approach avoidance. Um, so part of this is helping young people to navigate um, those, uh, those feelings, the stress that they might have, but in a way that is more productive for themselves, more utilitarian, that allows them to achieve their objectives and also deal with their own insecurities. We have been, through the, the partnership of our area school corporations, conducting some surveys over the past year with, with students K through 12, actually first grade through 12. And what we've learned, Mark, is that um, students, we, we've asked a question, what are the barriers to succeeding in school? And the forthrightness of students is refreshing. And here is what we are learning is that they share that they come to school angry and that they don't understand how to manage that emotion. Um, so there, there's a very large percentage of students who share that. We have 50% of our student base who comes to school grieving the loss of someone. Uh, that may be through death, that may be through a different family dynamic such as divorce, but there's some, there is something that they are grieving that they're thinking about, one out of two students. And then the third thing that comes to mind within this survey and research that we've done and in a way, it's the most disturbing one for me, the one I'm, I'm not completely understanding and wish to, is that about 47%, again, one out of two of those students, say that a, a barrier to their, to their success in the classroom is fear. They fear failing. And so what does, what does that say? And what, what happens when we fail? And what happens when we're surrounded with all kinds of failure? How much capacity does a human being have to house failures? And what happens to a human being when, when we're loaded up with so many of those? How do you help somebody through that emotional, emotionally difficult terrain? And doing it with, with a great deal of compassion but also determination is really important. So let's talk about your programs and, and how you structure those and how sure. you deal with those various issues. Yes, a couple of areas are, are coming to mind based on, on what we're speaking about now. And one of those is that when, when students uh, arrive into their senior year of high school, there, there are, are, are a whole series of milestones and events that need to happen for them to successfully move on to their next step. Um, and I'm thinking about post-secondary or college here. And so we have designed a series of labs that happen within the schools, and we help students with uh, the FAFSA for short, the free application for federal student aid that cause, it causes parents to groan everywhere uh, thinking about um, completing, completing that, those financial aid documents. So these are, these are guided workshops they are. That, where you're partnering with the students and you're going through this very sensitive material. Yeah. Uh, there will be approach avoidance, of course, um, but you now have somebody who is going to partner with you, is going to be there as a support and helping to fill out the forms and that's and right. navigate. That's right. What other kind? Of, what other kinds of workshops do you have? So we we help students also with uh, college applications, mm -hmm. and so we'll have college application days, and we may uh, some of our college application days generate 120 new scholarship or I'm, I'm sorry, college applications for students uh, for for area schools, and um, and then we also have um, scholarship application labs, and we partner with uh, a wonderful resource in the state of Indiana. There, there are 92 counties in Indiana and every county is served by a community foundation, a philanthropic nonprofit. And the, the um, community foundations accept donations uh, from, from good folks in their community uh, who, who want to see young people thrive and, and advance their educations. And so that's how scholarships become available. And so we partner uh, with the Community Foundation to help students complete 
uh, an online uh, digital application, which is a great resource. It includes essays, and we help them. We help proofread their essays, and all of these steps are examples, Mark, of things that can be barriers for students um, if they don't have someone within their family unit or support unit that is that helps that has walked that before. Right. And so we, we jump in and we say, okay, this isn't as scary and intimidating as it might look. We can do this. We're here. Um, don't be afraid. It's, it's a bunch of questions and paperwork and we, we can get this done. We also have developed over the past couple of years uh, a college and career ready student toolkit, a curriculum uh, for, for students. And what, what really prompted that is we we took a look, we held a mirror up in front of ourselves in the mentoring program that we have for high school students, and we realized it's not as robust as it needs to be. And relationships are, are just everything in life. They are, they, they help us in so many ways. The question we were asking within Project Leadership is how are we utilizing that relationship and leveraging that relationship to help students produce positive outcomes, which is that they're they're ready to be successful in post-secondary and they're going to see that through. And so we have a, um, the question we ask is, what does every high school student have in common? It's 48 months. And so we've developed um, a 48 month curriculum to guide students through each month of high school so that, so that if everyone doesn't have the same bucket of knowledge, um, we, we can kind of pour that bucket out on a table and say, here you go, here, here's what it all looks like if you've, if, you've, if you've never heard of this, and then we organize it in a way that makes it doable for students. Well, Tommy Pearson, thank you so much for sharing the work of Project Leadership here in, in, in the Muncie area, and thank you so much for your insights. Oh, thank you.